Good afternoon, I'm Abe. And I'm Frank. And this evening, we'll be adumbrating the second half of chapter 25, America Moves to the City, in Kennedy, Cohen, and Bailey's The American Pageant Textbook. Abe, I've decided I'm going to start this video. So let's start with the chapter, the march of the section, the march of the mind. As industrialization continued, the demand for more practical courses increased as well. This led to the rise of the elective system throughout most colleges in an effort to increase American pragmatism, or valuing practicality over anything else. Elsewhere, America was seeing huge steps forward in terms of public health, thanks to Louis Pasteur and Joseph Lister. Their discoveries led to increased life expectancy throughout our country. Gains were also being made in the spheres of psychology, with new books leading to advancement in that subject as well. But Abe, speaking of books, what was literature like at this time? I'm happy I finally get to talk. Libraries began to spring up all over America, but there was an increasing fear of offending subscribers and advertisers with possibly inappropriate book content. Sensationalism, or the use of shocking stories or language, became popular along with news about sex and scandal. And there were two prominent kings of journalism at this time. First, Joseph Pulitzer, who used sensationalism and pioneered new yellow journalism, or writing based on exaggeration. And second, William Randolph Hearst, who was remembered for heading the San Francisco Examiner newspaper. But let's zoom into a certain aspect of literature. Frank, what, what was going on with the magazines at this time? Magazines were popping up like gophers. Chief among them were Harper's, The Atlantic Monthly, and Scribner's Monthly. These magazines served to distribute news across the countries, and some of them, such as The Atlantic, still exist today. These magazines advocated in favor of reform as well as policy change, such as Henry George in his work Progress and Poverty, in which he advocated an 100% tax on gains of the wealthy. Another such reformer was Edward Bellamy, who published Looking Backwards, which criticized the injustices perpetuated against the working class. But Abe, can you tell me about what was going on with books at this time? Yes, before we start though, Kennedy attempts to scare you in the next few pages with a long list of names. Don't worry, these people probably won't appear on the AP exam and are more likely to appear on your next English test. Kennedy got a little bit confused. Harlan Halsey authored dime novels, or adventure stories. Lewis Wallace authored the extremely successful novel Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ, which was praised as the Uncle Tom's Cabin of the Anti-Darwinists. Horatio Alger, or Holy Horatio, wrote juvenile fiction teaching moral lessons. Walt Whitman penned the famous novel Leaves of Grass and the poem O oh Captain, My Captain. Emily Dickinson wrote thousands of poems that were only published after her death. All right, Frank, I felt like my list of names was a little light. I agree. Were there any more? Yeah, I got 10 more for you. Let's start off with Kate Chopin, who wrote about feminism in her masterpiece, The Awakening, a book so good, 10 out of 10 would read it again after having just read it again. Second is Mark Twain, who wrote about the controversies and perversions of American society in his uh, book, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Bret Hart, who wrote about Gold Rush Society. William Howells, who published The Atlantic Monthly Magazine. Stephen Crane, who wrote about true American society in The Red Badge of Courage. Henry Adams, who wrote biographies of key American figures such as Jefferson and Adams. Henry James, who wrote about the clash of culture between America and Europe. Jack London, who wrote about the wilderness in the, his books The Call of the Wild and White Fang. Paul Dunbar and Charles Chestnut, who wrote poems using the realism method. And last but not least, Theodore Dreiser, who was considered one of the first social novelists. Now, as Abe pointed out earlier, many of these names, if not all of them, will not be on the AP test. So don't lose sleep memorizing them. Kennedy just got a bit carried away unloading his evidence and facts on us. But Abe, speaking of evidence and facts, can you tell me about morality? Yes. Victoria Woodhull challenged the American morals of the late 1800s by proclaiming her belief in free love. She also accused Henry Ward Beecher, a famous preacher, of adultery. 
Anthony Comstock defended American morales against these challenges and confiscated thousands of pills used by abortionists in addition to confiscating hundreds of thousands of obscene photos. A woman's place in society was also changing at this time, as women began to work on typewriters and switchboards and began to attend nightclubs. The new sense of female independence was reflected in surging divorce rates, increased use of birth control, and forthright discussion of sexual topics. Frank, could you expand on women's freedom and talk about their freedoms in the city? I could do that. The era of the city prompted an era of divorce, as women experienced greater levels of freedom. Birth rates decreased, mostly because, unlike on a farm, in a city, extra children became a burden, as they were simply more mouths to feed, whereas on a farm, they could be put to work in the fields. Calls for women's economic equalization with men became more prominent, showcased in Charlotte Perkin Gilman's Women in Economics. The book called for greater female involvement in the economy. Others campaigned for the vote, organizing into the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Unfortunately, black women were largely excluded from this enterprise by their white peers, but black women such as Ida B. Wells played a crucial role in fighting against Southern lynchings. But Abe, can you tell me how the city encouraged more reform? Yes, the nation as a whole was moving towards prohibiting alcohol, mm. but fierce opposition came from immigrant groups. But the Women's Christian Temperance Union formed against alcohol, led by Francis E. Willard. And furthermore, in 1893, the Anti-Saloon League was formed. And these organizations triumphed with the passage of the 18th Amendment in 1919, prohibiting alcohol. But the amendment was later repealed soon after in 1933. All right, Frank, could you tell me how art and music evolved during this time? Absolutely. Unfortunately, art had really failed to take off in America during the early 1800s, but began to take off by the end of the century. Famous painters included James Whistler, John Singer, and Thomas Eakins, who pioneered the use of vibrant realism throughout their work. Music began to gain popularity as well, especially after the introduction of the phonograph, a mechanical device for playing pre-recorded music. When Americans wanted to go out for an evening of excitement, it was still a little too early to hit up the clubs. Instead, they went to fairs and shows, such as the World's Columbia Exposition in Chicago. Right on. But Abe, can you tell me, what did Americans do for amusement at this time? Well, the American people now had more time to play, so they sought new forms of entertainment. These new forms included, first, vaudeville, or a show with comedy and dance acts. S second, the circus. Third, Wild West shows, headed by William Buffalo Bill Cody. Fourth, baseball and basketball, with professional leagues formed in the 1870s and 1880s for each, respectively. Fifth, football. And sixth, boxing, or, as Kennedy pretentiously likes to call it, pugilism. Above all, however, two crazes swept across the Americas near the dawn of the 20th century. The first was croquet, and the second was the safety bicycle. In conclusion, Chapter 25 serves to explain the effects of European immigration and urbanization on American culture. On the negative sides, feelings of nativism developed, and cities grew too fast for sanitary necessities to keep up. On the positive side, a new era of art and literature emerged, and education improved. Americans were also driving to the challenge of contemporary morals and reform on their views in terms of women and blacks. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions. We'll catch you guys next time.